Welcome to the weekend. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Well, is it time to be hoarding gold, silver? Should you be uh, grabbing the, the jewelry and putting it under your mattress? What's going on in these economic times? To find out, I decided to, to find, well, academics. And since I never did well in school, I thought I'd talk to them from Metro State College here in Denver. Uh, John Cochran, you're the um, uh, dean of the business school. You're an uh, economics professor. And most oddly, you're a senior fellow for the Mises Institute, which only you and I know what that is in all of Colorado. <laughs> but it's a libertarian-leaning uh, think tank out in, out in D.C., isn't it? Uh, it's in Auburn, Alabama, right. and it is probably the leading, what I would call, classical liberal, libertarian, Austrian economic think tank in the country with uh, a wealth of information on the topics you're asking. Yeah, I can imagine and you do really well at cocktail parties. The women just <laughs> swoon for talk like that. Well, actually, I did real, real well 35 years ago when I met my wife, and, and she's kept me Nicely. very happy and Nicely off the played. market well for Tom years. Biddings from uh, Summit Economics. Right. Now, you, you work with uh, Tucker Hart Adams and other economists. You, you do the predictions. So businessman asks you, can, should we invest in this here in Colorado? That basically right, the way it works. Right. Should, have, should we invest? What's the impact of different legislation on the industry uh, or on employment? Things of that nature. All right. Let's bring it down to my level. These are bizarre economic times. Now, for somebody my age, I'm 46. I, I remember bad economic times when I was a teenager. You know, with under Carter and the recession under the first part of Reagan's administration. That was the old man's problem. I didn't have to worry about 16% uh, uh, interest rates and 12% and inflation and all, all, everything else. Now I'm pretty freaked out. I mean, we, we're, we're having something that I don't quite understand. We're printing money hand over fist, yet we still haven't gotten to inflation yet. Wh where are we? What's, uh, let's, let's start over here. I'm worried that government is spending more money than it takes in. I'm talking on a federal level. Mm -hmm. That we've got a budget deficit that's about $44,000 for every man, woman, and child. We've got these unfunded mandates coming. And the stimulus packages really just print money. They, these, these, a lot of this money is being monetized. That is, we're not actually going out and finding people to borrow money from. We're, we're printing dollars. What does it mean? Well, we potentially are printing dollars. Uh, the, um, and I think that's one of the criticisms of this new QE2, quantitative easing 2, where the Federal Reserve has announced that they'll buy another $600 billion in Treasury bills over the next six months. And uh, one, of the, one of the criticisms of that is that essentially we're using the central bank and monetary policy, which should be independent of political influence, which it's not, no, let me, let me bring this to back. bail let me out fiscal policy. This, because I get really confused. So the, uh, the, the, the Fed says we're going to buy bonds, and that's a way for them to put cash into, into, the, banking into system, the banking system, into banking reserves. So in other words, the banks have these bonds, and the Federal Reserve says we're going to buy them. Here's a bunch of cash. They put out the paper. They bring in the bonds, which, uh, which are certificates, mm -hmm. and now the banks have a whole bunch more money they didn't have before. It's almost like an IPO for, for, for the banks. They get, they get money, and they've only had to give out pieces of paper. Well, it, it, with, the, with the quantitative easing, it's, think of it a little bit, you know, their objective is to lower longer-term interest rates and to keep longer-term interest rates low. And, and, and part of the issue is, is if the world turned around tomorrow and all of that money that they're putting out on the street it started being borrowed and spent, it, it could be inflationary. But there's, there's slow demand. So... Uh, yeah, very, I think there would, really would be. Uh, but the, the demand for the money isn't necessarily there. But by keeping the, the long-term interest rate low, they're really boosting the asset markets. So they're trying to keep real estate prices uh, stabilized, trying to keep them from dropping further. Uh, there's a, a lot of commercial real estate right. that's coming up you for have, refinance. You have, you have confused me Sorry no end that. already. So okay. let's uh, reel this back okay. and, 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 and help me understand this. Uh, let, let, let's go back. We had a sluggish economy. Mm -hmm. And so Obama said, you know what we need to do is we need to stimulate the economy. What we need to do is, is take a lot of money and do shovel-ready products and uh, projects. And let's go out there and put money in, into the system. Uh, for those of us who are wonks, we say that's a Keynesian idea that John Maynard Keynes said, let's, mm -hmm. let's prime the, mm -hmm. pr the pump. And so we put in almost $800 billion 
into the economy to boost employment, to get the uh, economy going. It doesn't matter where the money's coming from. We'll pay for that later. We'll put it on our kid's credit card, but we'll put it forward. And a year later, we got Squat Ola to show for our, as far as I can show. Has, has the stimulus plan been a success? Well, I think it's been a success in terms that it, it's, it's helped us. It's sort of like, you know, we're in a plane, the plane's crashing. We're going down fast. And the, the first objective in, in late 2008, and really before Obama, was to try to stabilize and, and try to find a bottom sooner rather than later. And, and, and the fear in these things is that you end up finding a bottom very low, like in the Great Depression. So in that sense, it, it, it stabilized things. I don't think it's been a great success by any means. It certainly hasn't turned the economy around, and I don't think QE2 will do it either. Okay. I'm probably vehemently disagree with that. The stimulus was an abysmal failure in terms of what it promised as a stimulus to the economy. It was a knee-jerk reaction back to the simplest 1930s Keynesian framework, which had been pretty well discredited in macroeconomic modeling from studies from the 60s through late 2002, 2003. It um, added to the debt, created extreme regime uncertainty, which is adding to the business climate that uh, we don't have businesses and firms willing to, to go out and invest, put at risk, hire new workers. And even the timing of it, saying it stabilized the economy, they passed this spring 2000 nine essentially and the NBER dating dated the end of the recession the downcline in June 2009 way before any of the stimulus oh, had any impact let me be simplistic I mean that's hindsight when you when you look well, at it and fiscal policy always drags it, it always comes a little bit after the fact but when you're sitting there in September 2008, and, and it wasn't just the Obama administration, it was many economists. It, there was a pretty good consensus among economists that you have to do something. Hogwash. Now, maybe not that among was, the libertarian was, economists, but, no, well, I, think but I think there was pretty good consensus. Well, how, 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 there was consensus let me, let me bring that there needed to be things done in the financial. All right, academics, so bring it back, yes. bring it back, yeah. bring it back to the uh, uh, high school dropout level here that, to help me out. All I was worried about was putting money into the economy that wasn't there, that we're, we're charging up a, a credit card. The idea that it you know, gets spending going, and that doesn't seem to work. And well, so is, is, are we talking about doing that yet again? When you say quantitative easement to QE2, uh, are we really talking about a stimulus package too? Well, they're two different things. I mean, they're really two different things. Um, and, and I think you have to look at, you know, when you're going to borrow to spend money, it's a question of what you spend it on. If you're, if you're investing it and there's a payoff, it can make a lot of sense. You know, the federal debt, I think, peaked out after World War II at about 127, 28 percent of GDP. And what's scary is that now it's approaching 100 percent of GDP, which is the highest it's been probably since World War II. So there's, I think, in terms of the level of federal debt, there's real concern. But it's, I'm, not, I'm less concerned. To, to, to put that into, into English, it would take us a year's worth of productivity. If everybody went to, went to work all year, uh, didn't, didn't eat anything, paid no rent, and put everything they earned into reducing the debt, everything we produce, we, we'd have to work, the country would have to work for a year just to pay off this debt. I mean, all of our okay. output. Well, that's true. Yeah. That, right. that's so in other words, that's this is huge. Or to put it a different way, we haven't yeah. had this much debt since we were in a world war. So now we're in a debt level where we don't have a world war. Um, we're not fighting for uh, uh, keeping the Nazis from crawling up the beaches, but, but we're, we're just as much in debt. Well, th that's right. And, and the, the, the issue here is that we've got, I, th I think the number's around 10 percent. So we've moved from maybe 90 percent to 100 percent in the last couple of years, which is a very hefty clip. Way too fast. It's not sustainable. And, and we're having the same problem. You know, Europe is having the same problem. Japan 